What's up, everybody? Welcome into Tom Curran's Patriots Talk podcast. It's an emergency Blizzard of 2022 pod. Phil Perry and I are going to talk about Tom Brady not retiring, but maybe retiring. Phil, how do we get our brains around attacking this particular sandwich? That's a great question, Tom. I mean, I, I think we should at least acknowledge the awkwardness of this whole deal, right? Yep. The cat's out of the bag, the horse is out of the barn, and the goat has to be out of his mind right now because he's not even allowed to make his own retirement announcement 22 years into the league, the greatest athlete in the history of North American pro sports, and we get a leak like he's any old player on a Saturday afternoon before the AFC Championship game that he's going to retire. That is not the way Tom Brady wanted this thing out. That is clear now based on some of what we've heard from people around him. Yeah, and you got players on social media opening a vein with tributes to the greatness of Tom Brady and teammates, and I've gotten at least three or four texts and tweets from friends going, I'm crying, onions, and then are they going to do it all again in two weeks when Tom Brady does indeed retire? Jeff Darlington, Adam Schefter, as you know by now, reported that Brady will retire. TV 12 Sports Therapy. Brady's business arm put out a tweet saying, yeah, God bless him. He's our guy. And then they had to take it down. I am told, told Tom Brady is out of the country right now. He is in a warm place. He will be in a warm place next week as well. Schefter and Darlington both reporting in their story that Brady didn't want to have any kind of an announcement out there that would undercut the playoffs, postseason games and the Super Bowl. Be that as it may, they've reported that he will retire, which now this becomes muddied and undercuts the playoffs and the Super Bowl to a degree. And it's ironic, Phil, because they're business partners. Man in the arena, airs on ESPN. Jeff Darlington and Adam Schefter are brazy, cozy friends. Cozy friends. I have been that in the past. I don't think I'm nearly as cozy as those guys are right now. But it makes for awkward moments, as you pointed out. Tom, I just, uh, I, I wonder how this isn't a little bit more buttoned up on Brady's end because for Schefter and Darlington to report it, it's not on them to make sure, even if they are business partners and have great relationships with them, it's not, it's still their job to report the news if they think it's, it's accurate. And obviously they do. And they've got two different excellent reporters on top of this thing. I would assume speaking to two different people, at least about this very subject. And now we have Tom Brady's agent. We have Tom Brady's dad, all sorts of people on the record saying, whoa, 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 whoa. So how does this even get this far down the hill if this is a <clears throat> this is a snowball? How does this happen? Love it. Um, I did text briefly with uh, Tom Brady's dad, and he said, fallacious, fallacious. And here is the tweet from... Don Yee, and this was a statement given, appears to it appears to Adam Schefter, who broke the report. So here's uh, Don Yee's statement. Quote, I understand the advanced speculation about Tom's future. With, without getting into the accuracy or inaccuracy of what's being reported, Tom will be the only person to express his plans with complete accuracy. He knows the realities of the football business and planning calendar as well as anybody, so that should be soon. Let's rip right through this without getting into the accuracy or inaccuracy of what's being reported. That means that I'm not refuting the work that Adam has done. And again, Adam Schefter does an excellent job. He's well-trusted. And additionally, he's basically partnered up in some ways with um, Brady ESPN and, and Jeff Darlington's extremely, you know, close to Brady, but there's a business entanglement as well, you know, so they're not going to pee on the report. And I'm also led to believe, too, not by anybody who said it to me, but I'm presuming that it's accurate. The people who I'm talking to have said, I don't know if that he's even made a decision, truly a final decision. So um, and next, Tom will be the only person to express his plans with complete accuracy. We get that. He wants to do it himself. And Phil, he knows the realities of the football business and the planning calendar as well as anybody. So what's that lead you to believe in terms of timing? Well, leads me to believe that he's going to retire and he wants to give the Bucs enough advance notice to, to help them in terms of their team building plan for this offseason. He understands the calendar, meaning he understands when the Bucs have to know whether or not they've got a Hall of Fame quarterback on their roster. And so he doesn't want to do them dirty. So this is coming soon would be my anticipation 
based on that last sentence from Don Yee. What happened to, I'll retire when I suck? I think he realized he was never going to suck. <laughs> I think he realized his, his brain functions at too high a level at this point, and his arms is still too good. I mean, he physically, he's, he's too polished. He, by the time he sucks, his, his son will be playing college football somewhere or something, and he will have missed his entire high school career, and who knows what else. Uh, in terms of opportunities that he wants to pursue in this life. So, you know, what happened to I'll, I'll retire when I suck or Quarenti Cinco, right? You know, that would that be next be. year. He's 44 now. I thought 45 was going to be the goal. That's why when we talked about it the other day on TV, I said, I don't think he's going to retire. I think he should, but I don't think he will. He, he'll probably come back. Yeah. And it's really interesting because toward the end of his Patriots career, when people talked about retirement, he told me a long time ago in 2013, he was going to play until he was 43. 10 more years. I'm done at 43. Um, obviously he played past that and got another Super Bowl win and another MVP level season. But people around here would say, well, if he retires before 45, then people won't buy into the TB12 stuff. So he has to. And I thought that was the most asinine assessment that I'd ever heard in my life. You got a guy who's winning MVPs and coming back from 28 to three at the age of 40 or 41. And people are like, All right, I'm not, I don't think that whole pliability thing works. I mean, did he make it to 45? No. So I'm not going to try and stretch or drink water. Um, So the fact that he actually has retired prior to 45 leads you to believe that he beat father time. That's my biggest takeaway. You know, Mike Florio wrote it so many times on pro football talk. Nobody beats father time. And he would write that constantly about Brady. Some guys do. Jim Brown beat father time because he got out because he didn't want to play anymore. But Tom Brady might be, one of the only athletes that we could truly say beat father time. And he had stood there in front of father time saying, take me, take your best shot. And he never got a shot off against him. Well, he and never he lost- go ahead, Philly. No, I was just going to say, and it's not, and it's not because he, he retired early because he felt like he'd, he'd accomplished everything he wanted to accomplish and he wanted to walk away. Exactly. I mean, he is at the top of every single list in the sport. In pro sports, I mean, he we we made a big deal out of getting championship number six because it tied Michael Jordan. So we're crossing sports now and comparing him to the greatest of all time in that sport. And then he goes and he beats that guy. So to me, that's why I said he should retire. I wasn't trying to put anything on the guy. If he wanted to play, he wants to play, and that's great. Good for him. But he has nothing left to prove. I think <laughs> and he has his health, Tom. And I think that's key. People say, well, he never gets hurt. And I, I get that. He, he never gets hurt but it doesn't mean he can't get hurt. I mean, he got popped in the chin and he's bleeding from the mouth the other day. And I know that wasn't a, a hellacious hit by any means, but if that guy is one step faster, maybe it is. And maybe right. that's a real injury. So why risk that? Yeah. You can't, whether it's, do you ever get a picture of what Johnny Unitas's fingers looked like? How many fingers have we seen from former NFL players, Pete Carroll included gnarled, torn, ripped apart, get out with your fingers intact because that can happen on any throw, not just being slow or old. Um, I think interestingly, Phil, he didn't want to play until he sucked. He also didn't want to play when his team sucked. And that might be the upshot of this. The Bucks were taking on water a little bit. You saw how hard they had to work to come back at home against the Los Angeles Rams last week. Um, A lot of good fortune brought them to the point where they were going to get Tom Brady certainly probably didn't want to be out there at 45 years old, quarterbacking a four and five team at Thanksgiving. Looking at Bruce Arians with that big alien pack on his chest and saying, what am I doing? What am I doing? I, I could still do it, but I look like an idiot out here. We're not winning. Kyle Trask seems like a nice kid. Let's get the hell out of the way. I didn't think he'd do it. It appears he will be doing it. He still hasn't done it. But that might be the biggest part. It's not him sucking. It's I can't play for a team that sucks and pretend that we'll get him next year. That makes sense, doesn't it? It does. Do you think the Bucs will suck next year? Without Brady, they will. (laughs) They will will now. I, I just I'm looking at their roster, the players that are at least under contract. They still got a lot of their guys under contract. I know Chris Godwin is is the one big name that is scheduled to hit free agency, but Levante David, Devin White, Mike Evans, Vita Vea, Shaq hey. Barrett, Tristan Wirfs. I mean, like 
there's got to be a point in which him working with Bruce Arians, though, as much as they liked each other, I'm sure Bruce Arians might feel the same way. Oh boy, Brady and the Antonio Brown, and we got to do this, and we got to do that. There's just so much encircling Tom Brady now. And maybe I'm completely wrong, but I think at whatever age Bruce Arians is, there's a lot that comes with coaching Tom Brady. 90% of it to the good, but 10% of it probably to the. <sighs> maybe. You know what's worse than coaching Tom Brady, though? Coaching Kyle, Kyle Trask. <laughs> Um, or Phil, coaching yeah. whoever the hell you draft this year because it's not a good quarterback class. Gabbert, get in there! Right. I mean, that could get old real fast. Phil, do you think the Patriots? Talk to me about the Patriots' um, football decision here. Um, what does it do now in hindsight? As we presume that Tom Brady will be done after two years in Tampa. I'm not sure it changes the conversation all that much, Tom, because he was so good for two years. I mean, he wins the Super Bowl last year, as we all know. He was, you could make a very compelling case, as Steve Palazzolo did on this podcast a few weeks ago, that he was the most valuable player in the league this year. And we know that's essentially what he was looking for, right? It was two more years, two years, 50 million ish. I mean, maybe yep, he that's it. wanted to play until he's 50 guaranteed and... the Breeze contract. So, you know, does it change the conversation that much for you? I, I think if you were to look at it and say, okay, say the Patriots did give him that deal and say he stays for 2020 and 2021, you still have, in a vacuum, one of the best quarterbacks in football. I'm not sure the roster would be good enough for the Patriots to be a very good football team. Mm -hmm. And then what you would be looking at in 2022, so the year you lose Brady, you would probably be looking at a cratering type of year the way the Patriots had the year they actually lost Brady. So to me, it just would have kind of given you two more probably – first round exit types of seasons and then what you had starting last year. And then you kind of restart the timeline. What you don't have is Mac Jones. You don't have some of these free agents, you know, probably a couple of them at least that you think are part of this core moving forward. So if you love Mac Jones, you're looking at this and saying they made the right call because they found the perfect guy. And that guy might not be not only in, not in this draft, but he might not be in next year's draft or the draft after that too. You know, and so, you know yeah. Sorry. No, I don't know. Do you, do you think it changes yeah, the conversation in, in for a, you? In a different way. Um, it just crystallizes it somewhat. <clears throat> it's something that we've both talked about, but had Brady stayed and played 2020 and 2021 here, he wasn't going to win a Super Bowl. No dough, no targets. It was bad enough last year. I wouldn't have gotten that much better this year. The angst that was present beginning after the Super Bowl win over Atlanta probably wouldn't have gone away. Tom Brady needed to go because he had philosophical differences with what Bill Belichick wanted from the position and from the team in terms of financial outlay and the ability to build the team. Bill said, he, and I believe he would have kept Tom Brady in 2020 at his price, which was $22 million cap hit at the max. That's why he was never getting two years, 50 million guaranteed. So in going, mom and dad lived in separate houses, but they got to visit each other last October 3rd, and they got to have a really great opportunity to watch each other from afar and experience the people who they were with instead and appreciate each other for what they were in watching that. And I just think that October 3rd, that game here um, was so cathartic in so many ways. So I'm not talking about the football level. It wouldn't have been good. We're both right about that. But it was so cathartic, I think, that Brady and Belichick got to leave, see each other from afar, appreciate each other from afar, and then Brady and Belichick play against each other and spend that 20 or 25 minutes. That's going to make such a huge difference for Patriots fans down the road when they watch Hall of Fame inductions, Brady's retirement, and Belichick standing there maybe at a press conference or vice versa. It just makes a difference. I really think that that was an important thing for the, the entire journey in, in hindsight. Did they have a plan? No. They didn't know how they were going to replace Brady. They tried to replace him with Jimmy Garoppolo. Fortunately, Brady played too good to keep that from happening. But when you look at, hey, did it have a romantic ending up there in New England? How did it end with Brady and Belichick? Perfectly. <laughs> in a way, 
Phil? Well, not perfectly. Perfectly know, would have been riding off into the sunset with another about Super Bowl. Well, yeah, but they still would have hated each other if they had. They were so fucking sick of each other. They needed the break, man. They they needed to to find out to appreciate. They needed to to go someplace else. I think. No, I I think that's, I think that's a good way of putting it. And you know now Bill Belichick, you know, starting really in twenty twenty one. If you're counting that twenty twenty year as a reset year, he's got a chance to kind of mold this thing uh, the way he would like to in however many years he has left as the head coach of the Patriots. But that'll be, it, it's, it's nice that we get the period on the Brady timeline now, right? Mm. Because Seemingly, we'll always right be now it's an ellipsis. Seemingly. <laughs> I think it's going to be a period. And it, it's nice that we have that and we know now. Okay, he played two more years. He was phenomenal. He won one Super Bowl. And we'll always look back at, at how it ended. And people will always, Tom, even though you and I, I think, feel a certain way about how Brady left and why it was good or bad. There were people who will always think back to that decision and, and wonder, or if they don't wonder, they'll assume it was the wrong one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, it's just nice for, for us to be able to have some solid Intel on how the thing actually played out now. And so now we'll look at it moving forward and say, okay, Bill, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Right. We'll see you in two weeks when Tom Brady retires for the Tom Brady retirement. No quotes around it. Podcast special. Until then, let the speculation begin. If Josh McDaniels takes the Las Vegas Raiders job, Tom Brady back as offensive coordinator. Hey.